Currently, in Russia, discussions persist regarding the future of the 2214 passenger aircraft. Although it is among the few domestically manufactured airliners, the 2214 has historically faced major obstacles in securing substantial commercial airline interest, a contradiction rooted fundamentally in its origins at the Kazan Aviation Plant, also known as KAZ, and the subsequent political, economic, and industrial upheavals. To understand why Kazan became the birthplace of this aircraft and why its success ultimately remained unrealized, it is necessary to examine the project's origins from the early 1990s to the present day. The concept of developing a new medium-range airliner at Kazan initially arose during a period of economic collapse. Following the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991, Russia's aviation sector, previously centralized and extensive, was fragmented. Factories that had previously manufactured dozens of aircraft each year were abruptly deprived of funding, orders, and access to export markets. The Kazan Aviation Plant, which already had considerable experience in the manufacture of complex airframes such as bombers like the 222M, found itself in immediate need of additional projects. At that time, a team from the Sukhoi Design Bureau visited the facility with the Ilyushin Il-62 project and its related drawings, a design which one Kazan engineer described as a revolutionary aircraft. If pursued, that initiative could have substantially altered Kazan's trajectory. However, from a practical standpoint, such a program could not have been initiated earlier than 1995 due to limitations in resources and planning capacity at that time. Instead, Kazan was compelled to select from several potential civilian projects to sustain the factory's operations. These included modernizing the 2204, developing the Antonov An-218, manufacturing the 2334, or advancing the Il-96-300. At approximately the same time, Valentin Klimov, the chief designer at Tupolev, sought to develop the 2330, a large military transport aircraft. Although preliminary work commenced, with drawings for 25% of the parts released for production, this project was discontinued before substantial development could begin. The decisive turning point occurred during a council convened by aviation authorities, including Vitaly Kopilov, who ultimately chose to concentrate on the Tupolev 2204 family. When asked whether a more advanced design existed, designers proposed the 2204-200, an enhanced variant that would later evolve into the 2214. This version incorporated reinforced wings and landing gear, along with a slightly modified fuselage. Engineers initially favored a round section fuselage similar in concept to what would later appear on the MC-21, but aerodynamic specialists presented strong theoretical counter-arguments. As a result, the project moved forward with a more conventional configuration that engineering teams could realistically implement into production. Kazan received the initial 2214 design documentation in the summer of 1992 and subsequently developed a comprehensive business plan. Hyperinflation rendered all financial assumptions unstable, forcing every cost calculation to be frequently recalculated to reflect Russia's rapidly deteriorating economy. Even under optimistic projections, planners anticipated a production rate of 7 aircraft per year in the first phase and 12 aircraft per year in the second phase, a demanding target for any post-Soviet industrial enterprise. Not all members of the aviation community welcomed the decision to assign the 2214 program to Kazan. Anatoly Bratukin, then head of the Aviation Industry Department within the Russian Ministry of Industry, actively advocated for Kazan to manufacture the Il-96-300 instead. He also supported large-scale upgrades to heavy equipment, including fuselage riveting and cladding machines sourced from the United States. Despite heated debate, the majority of participants supported the 2204-200, later renamed the 2214, effectively sidelining Bratikin's preferred proposal. 
With design approval secured and funding mechanisms arranged, Kazan rolled out the first 220 200 prototype in February of 1996, by which time Yuri Litvanov had assumed the role of plant director. The aircraft made its maiden flight in March, marking the formal beginning of 2214 production. According to veteran engineers, Kazan invested approximately 146 million United States dollars to prepare the production line. At the exchange rate of that period, this amounted to roughly 703 billion rubles, or about 23.7 billion rubles in today's terms, when adjusted for inflation. A significant portion of this funding was obtained through a government loan of 60 billion rubles in 1995, sufficient to cover the production cost of 32214 aircraft. This financial support was secured with the backing of First Deputy Prime Minister Oleg Soskovets. Despite this assistance, Kazan faced an unpredictable and largely indifferent market environment. The 1990s were marked by a deep economic downturn. Russia's civil aviation sector experienced declining passenger numbers and airlines prioritized immediate cash flow over long-term capital investments. As one industry insider later summarized, the state effectively abandoned the aircraft. No substantial government orders were placed, and policymakers such as Yegor Gaidar openly argued that Russia should purchase foreign aircraft rather than invest in domestic manufacturing, which they viewed as uncompetitive. Throughout much of the decade, Kazan produced only one or two aircraft per year, causing the 2214 to age technologically before it ever reached true commercial maturity. The first operators of the 2214 were not major national carriers, but Delavia, a regional airline based in Russia's Far East, which received the initial two aircraft. Test pilots and factory engineers worked closely with Delavia during early operations. Initial technical issues related to wing and tail control mechanisms were identified and corrected quickly. Passengers and flight crews praised the aircraft's performance and reliability. One early modification involved relocating the toilets from the middle of the cabin to the rear. Although this seemed like a minor change, it significantly improved passenger comfort. Kazan engineers and test pilots based in Khabarovsk responded rapidly to early operational feedback, helping to build initial confidence in the aircraft. However, following changes in factory management, responsiveness to airline concerns declined. Under new leadership, including financial director Jamil Tegirov, the plant shifted its priorities away from rapid technical upgrades towards stricter cost control. Over time, this reduced enthusiasm among operators, particularly Delavia, which increasingly struggled in competition with larger carriers. Other Russian airlines also showed interest in the 2214. Tatarstan Airlines nearly acquired a fleet, but Delavia's more aggressive stance initially secured priority access. Krasair operated 22214 aircraft, but later collapsed due to broader financial instability in Russia's commercial aviation sector. Although occasional interest was expressed by larger airlines, including tentative signals from Aeroflot, the 2214 never achieved widespread acceptance. Production figures confirm this reality. Since 1996, Kazan has produced approximately 92 214 aircraft, the majority of which were assigned to government, military, or special mission roles, rather than commercial airline service. By the year 2025, Red Wings, Russia's primary commercial operator of the type, operated only three 2214 aircraft. Decades after its introduction, the 2214 remains economically relevant only within limited and specialized niches. Today, the Kazan Aviation Plant faces challenges stemming from both historical legacy constraints and modern industrial realities. One persistent issue is limited production capacity combined with a shortage of skilled personnel. Despite ambitious government plans calling for up to 10 214 aircraft per year and more than 115 aircraft by the year 2030, actual output has fallen far short 
In 2025, internal plans anticipated four deliveries, yet only one aircraft was nearing completion due to a lack of engineers and qualified technicians. This reflects a broader problem across Russia's aerospace sector, where the collapse of Soviet-era training systems created a long-lasting skills gap. Outdated industrial infrastructure further constrains production. Unlike modern aircraft factories that rely on digital design systems and automated machining, portions of KAZ still depend on manual processes and aging equipment. This significantly lengthens assembly times and raises costs. Aviation experts note that restoring high-volume 2214 production would require extensive modernization of workshops, tooling, and manufacturing workflows. Another major challenge lies in supply chain restructuring. Since 2022, Western sanctions have cut off access to many foreign components previously used in Russian civil aircraft. Authorities therefore mandated that the TU-214 be redesigned to rely exclusively on domestic systems. This process required additional engineering work, recertification, and inevitably caused further delays. Recent reports confirm that, despite ongoing modernization efforts, delivery rates remain far below expectations. Several anticipated contracts failed to materialize, and Aeroflot reportedly withdrew its interest entirely. As a result, Kazan remains without firm large-scale commercial orders. Although Russian officials promote the TU-214 as a symbol of import substitution and technological sovereignty, airlines remain cautious. One reason is the aircraft's outdated cockpit concept, which includes a flight engineer, a configuration largely abandoned in modern civil aviation. Airlines generally prefer two-person flight decks, lower operating costs, and modern avionics. Foreign aircraft have also remained attractive whenever available. Before sanctions, Russian carriers favored Airbus and Boeing models due to better economics, proven reliability, and global support networks. Even today, airlines often prefer to extend the service life of older Western aircraft, rather than wait years for limited 2214 deliveries. Uncertainty surrounding production timelines further complicates fleet planning. Airlines require predictable maintenance, training, and logistical support, areas where the 2214 ecosystem remains less mature. Experts involved in the program hold mixed views on the aircraft's future. On the positive side, the TU-214's basic aerodynamic design and fuselage structure are widely considered sound. Supporters argue that even the United States once sought insight into aspects of its aerodynamic theory. With sufficient investment, the aircraft could still serve domestic routes effectively and reduce dependence on imports. However, optimism is tempered by ongoing challenges in workforce availability, industrial modernization, and supply chain stability. Newer aircraft, such as the MC-21, intended to replace both the 2214 and foreign jets, face their own delays and certification hurdles. Until those programs reach stable production, the TU-214 remains a fallback solution with limited appeal. The story of how the Kazan Aviation Plant came to build the 2214 is not merely one of engineering. It reflects the broader post-Soviet transition, marked by political compromise, economic hardship, and shifting market realities. Born in the turmoil of the early 1990s, sustained largely by state financing rather than airline demand, the 2214 became more of a strategic symbol than a commercial success. What began as a means to preserve Kazan's workforce evolved into a prolonged struggle to define the aircraft's place in modern aviation. Caught between legacy design and future ambition, the 2214 stands today as both a reminder of past aspirations and a test of Russia's ability to rebuild its civil aviation industry under pressure. If you think the video was informative, please like, subscribe, and share. Please also take membership of the channel to encourage us.